In response to the successes of the Russian military industrial complex, the Ukrainian military has upgraded its drones, equipping them with thermite charges. These weapons are capable of releasing molten metal that burns at a temperature of 2,427 degrees Celsius, which is why the Ukrainian Armed Forces soldiers have dubbed them Dragon Drones. This was reported by the commander of the Ukrainian Armed Forces strike drone company, Vyacheslav. They have moved to a more official level and their supplies seem to have improved a lot, Vyacheslav said, as quoted by the New York Times. The new Ukrainian drones use thermite cartridges. Thermite, originally developed for welding railway tracks a century ago, is a mixture of aluminium and iron oxide. The mixture causes a self-sustaining reaction when ignited, making it virtually impossible to extinguish. The first use of these weapons became public back in early September. That's when video emerged showing one dispersing the molten mixture into trellises that concealed Russian troops and equipment. Additional videos soon popped up on social media showing more Ukrainian units using the weapon that way. Russia is also trying to use similar systems, but to what extent remains unclear. The combination of the searing heat of the thermite and the maneuverability and speed of a drone makes this a very lethal and versatile weapon. We are now seeing it applied elsewhere on the battlefield. At first, the drones were being deployed to burn away the areas where Russians sought cover and under the dense growth. Ukraine is also using these drones to attack armor. Using these fire-breathing drones on other target types does make sense as thermite may not be able to destroy some targets but can certainly damage them and take them out of the fight. Burning alive in a bunker filled with the horrific compound is also one heck of a psychological deterrent as well as being brutally effective. The UK military leadership is considering sending troops to Ukraine. They will assist in the training of new recruits according to the Times. As reported by the agency, plans are being discussed to send small groups of British military instructors to Western Ukraine. There, they would help provide basic training to Ukrainian recruits before they are deployed to the front lines in the east of the country. According to the agency's sources, this decision by the UK would help address some logistical challenges related to sending Ukrainian troops to British bases for training while also saving costs. As part of the multinational military operation codenamed Interflex, tens of thousands of Ukrainian soldiers have received training in the UK. However, according to British Defence Minister John Healy, the biggest obstacle in training Ukrainians is Ukraine providing personnel for training. Another source mentioned that sending British troops to Ukraine instead of conducting training on military bases in the UK would be cheaper and better. The source noted that training could be conducted there more quickly and it would be far from the front lines, significantly reducing the risk. At the same time, a Ukrainian military source stated that relocating training to Ukraine would send a powerful military political signal to other countries and to Russia. It would also mark the beginning of the de facto deployment of NATO military infrastructure on Ukrainian territory and serve as a strong deterrent. This decision would help allow British troops to acquire combat skills from Ukrainian forces and enable the testing of the latest weaponry being developed for the war. The Ukrainian source expressed hope that British leadership would inspire France to follow suit and conduct training in Ukraine, especially since discussions in Paris appear to have stalled due to political reasons. In early June, French President Emmanuel Macron announced plans to establish a coalition of countries willing to train Ukrainian troops on Ukrainian territory rather than abroad. At that time, Paris sent a corresponding proposal to the Baltic states, Poland, Denmark, Sweden, the United Kingdom, the Netherlands and the United States. However, many within NATO oppose this idea due to concerns about becoming a party to the war with Russia. Subsequently, media reports indicated that the Netherlands might join the French coalition. There were most likely 12 combat aircraft of the Russian Air Force at the Kanskaya airfield in Adigay that was attacked on the night of October the 9th to the 10th, although it is difficult to say what model they were. This is reported by Defense Express. Recall, drones attacked the Kanskaya military airfield in the Russia's Republic of Adigay. The airfield is located near the village of Kanskaya, close to the region's capital city of Maykop. Residents said that drones attacked the airbase Astra reported. According to NASA's fire monitoring program, a fire was recorded at the site following the attack. 
The Kanskaya Airfield is home to Russia's 272nd Training Aviation Regiment, according to Astra. Ukraine has carried out a number of strikes against air bases in an effort to weaken the more powerful Russian Air Force and curb Moscow's ability to launch devastating aerial attacks against Ukrainian cities. According to Defense Express, the first thing that analysts noted was that the Russian side is trying to present this airfield as a training ground for the military school. The airfield is mentioned as the 272nd Training Air Base, which is the airfield of the Krasnodar Aviation School. At the same time, the real current purpose of this facility is a military airfield. This is indicated by publicly available satellite images from ESA, the material says. Experts noted that even despite the low resolution of satellite images, one can still see the difference between combat aircraft and training aircraft. The fact is that the dimensions of Russian combat aircraft such as the Su-30, Su-34 and Su-35 are very different from the dimensions of the L-39 trainers. Moreover, most Russian fighters and frontline bombers have blue camouflage and on the satellite image for October the 6th, 12 such aircraft were spotted at the airbase, which exactly corresponds to the standard number of tactical aviation squadron. The Defense Express article says, Analysts were unable to clearly indicate which aircraft were being discussed, but they are convinced that higher quality satellite images should appear in the near future, which will allow them to assess the real scale of the damage. In addition, according to experts, the fact that the strike managed to hit something quite important, such as an ammunition depot, is evidenced by the fact that the evacuation of residents of the village of Rodnikovoy, which is located next to the airbase, is underway.